Right, I don't know if this is technically GA or not, but I'm delighted to say we have the writers, directors and producers of a new movie called Lakelands, uh, Robert Higgins and Patrick McGivney with us in studio. How are you doing, folks? Thanks for having us, Stuart. Uh, having did you make a sports movie? Is that is this a sports movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we were uh, always keen to make a sports film, yeah. We, we grew up playing football and we always thought it was a rich area to make a bit of bit of a film about and explore the culture around it, yeah. Yeah, 100%. What are the criteria for sports movies? I'm not sure, does it? Like, <laughs> I, 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 so, I, I, we're watching it. Um, I, the premiere was last night and it's in cinemas now? 5th of May. 5th of May. May, yeah. Okay, so uh, we can build up a bit of anticipation for it. But um, I think this is going to play well in America with the whole concussion subplot, like where, I, I mean... You think people know about concussion, but it turns out they don't. And that's a not to give anything away here, but it's a central part of the movie. So, sure. Why did you make concussion the the um, the injury as opposed to you know anything else that it could have been? Yeah, no, I think for us it was a, a very interesting, I suppose, jumping off point um, to explore other issues. Um, and I think the fact that it's an injury that's not visible, you can't see it. Um, I think that was interesting to us, and I think. Once we started doing a bit of a deep dive into it, we started having conversations with GA players who had suffered concussion. We had a couple of conversations with Laurie Ryan, who plays for um, Clare Ladies and at Lone Town. And once you actually begin to realise, you know, the the type of symptoms they suffer and um, how I suppose underrepresented it it, it is um, to an extent, and um, we just felt that it was an interesting issue that you know deserved showcasing. Um, do you go into the uh, writing process deciding that you want to tell a story about uh, an, an injury to a footballer how does how do you build this kind of uh, jigsaw of information that we get from the characters yeah I suppose we 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 started just wanting to explore the culture first firstly and then you know we grew up in and we always felt it was a strange that it hadn't kind of been represented more I think in the Irish cinema considering how Gaelic football in particular yeah right. yeah considering how big a part it is of mm. Irish kind of identity. So we were kind of used, it started from there and then we kind of used a lot of our own kind of personal experiences growing up and kind of filtered that in. And I suppose a big interesting part for us was how much identity can got, get wrapped up in playing the sport, especially in a small town. Yeah. So we kind of started looking at maybe a character who has to deal with that being taken away and kind of delving into that and coming at it from that angle and then using that as a jumping off point to kind of examine the kind of the niches and the little smaller parts of the culture. Mm. Um, this isn't your first spin at this. People who I think you can still see on the RT player, people might be familiar with your short movie called Drifting. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you you got Paul Mescal before or after he started to become Yeah, famous? yeah. Uh, just before he, he blew up, yeah. He came from the normal people set straight down to Longford. So. Right. So he was um, he was used to filming the Gaelic football bits. He did, yeah. yeah. I think that was one of the reasons he was attracted to the script. He'd obviously a GA player himself, and um, I think he was excited by the opportunity to depict that world in, in, in a small way. And yeah. For us, it gave us a lot of confidence. You know, it was the first time we were out in a, on a GA pitch with a camera, um, and I think you know it gave us a lot of confidence that we were you know able to capture the that that world with a bit of authenticity and it was it turned out to be a bit of a proof of concept for I was going to say because yeah. a lot of the themes are, are they're just longer written larger yeah, and more yeah. we kind of jump back in with the characters when they're a little bit older um, and for us that's a little bit more interesting when you know you're, you're, you've you had your potential and you're kind of a bit of a fading star and um, it's just an interesting par- uh, you know point to jump back into the story yeah um, you're from Granard yeah. yeah, so this is it, this is a home <laughs> set on home turf. It, it is indeed, yeah. Like we wouldn't have been able to make it without the help of the local club, and uh, we, we definitely called in a lot of favours. You know, I'd been playing for senior football for about twelve years, so I had a lot of favours to call in. So, and um, the boys came out to support. That obsession with GA, especially in rural areas, is is pertinent and it's so obvious in the film as well. Like, it, and it's it's ironic because lads want to batter lads a mile down the road more than and a team maybe 20 or 30 miles down the road it's yeah. so parochial and local but you get the sense <laughs> from the film as well how significant that is yeah no 100% look the G is it's, it's the lifeblood of so many communities and, and it gives people that sense of pride um, and sometimes that does boil over into you know unwarranted vi- rivalries and all that but um, I think we were just really keen to just capture that world with a bit of authenticity and for us like the acid test is and will be GA players watching and saying, yeah, that's what a dressing down from your coach sounds like, that's what a training session feels like. Um, and, you know, we just seen it as a massive opportunity to, to capture the world for the first time on cinema, in, in uh, on film. Coming, yeah. Would you call it coming of age? Or is it, it's not necessarily coming of age because the, the character is clearly beyond the, the teenage years or whatever, but it, it's certainly coming of something. 
Yeah, he's probably suffering from delayed adolescence, uh, our main yeah. character, so I suppose it is a coming of age, even though he is, you know, touching his late 20s, but, um, yeah, no, I, I, I probably would call it a coming of age story. Um, the, the players in the GA scenes, are they your teammates from, or, or are they all yeah. actors? Is it there, are, there are a lot of the boys now we would have grown up right. playing with and that, and... It came to the cold evening in November. They were getting a few phone calls when it's come out and they were, they were running around with us. Convincing them to actually act, right? Because it's not, you know, the, the crisis of masculinity is the centre of this whole thing here. And yeah. you're like, no, no, it's fine. You, you just have to pretend to be the thing you do all the time. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just it's be yeah. yourself. It was what, funny because... What is myself? Yeah, exactly. Well, look, the, there was actually a bit of rivalry going in in, uh, in that uh, training session that we had. It was a bit of a game and I think they forgot there was a camera there. There was a few... Big digs going in. They heard an actor was coming down from from Cork, so they were like, "Right, let's let's hop into him." <laughs> it, it was easily done. Then you, you don't have to. You almost don't have to force it. It's funny because that that masculinity that word that you mentioned, Jar, like it, it's it, it's a relationship with his father as well, which is complicated and probably more so for a lot of people in rural areas as well. That there's it, it's all unspoken. There's no "I love yous" and that sort of thing. <laughs> it, that's very much a sense with this relationship between the character and his father. Yeah, yeah, we started off with Keen that he has a big kind of shell up the the lead character is called Keen and um he kind of has just this shell of, you know, he's a good football player and you know he's he's a well-known around town with the lads and everything like that. So we just started kind of looking at what it's like when you chip away at that a little bit and he kind of looks at opening up a little bit more as the kind of the film goes on. Yeah, yeah. And how difficult it is for him to do that. Yeah, for sure, and and you know I think when you watch the film you'll see like he's got different versions of himself. He's the version he is with his teammates, with his friends, and then with his dad, of course. And you know his 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 dad is there for him and and does care for him, but just doesn't necessarily have the the language to to and verbalize to, it. Yeah, to verbalize yeah. it exactly. And like you know his you know it's 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 still. You know he's still doing everything he can, and like um, I think we just wanted to portray that relationship in 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 a way that felt real to us, um, and and uh, not just have you know the stereotypical Irish alpha who's very cold and doesn't care. Like he does care, he just can't say it, he can't verbalize it. But the impact of him not being able to verbalize it is that uh, Keen is not able to verbalize either the really important things where he's just pretending that he's grand going to training because he can't talk about the fact that he's not grand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's definitely a kind of a cycle that's ongoing. Yeah, and um, I suppose yeah, it's kind of his journey into into breaking that cycle that's probably been kind of passed on, um, ongoing. Yeah, and then we've got the character of of Grace and um, Danielle Gallagher. She comes back from England, and and she's the first one to kind of chip away at that shell and make him realise that there's a big world out there outside of club football and and the Midlands and and Granard. Yeah. and the farm and the farm. Although I'm not sure, <laughs> I, I, does he? What does he know this at the end? I, I, I mean, obviously, it's up for everybody yeah, to make their own yeah, mind up, but yeah, it's up for debate, you know. Um, yeah. check out Lakelands May fifth and tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, there's no. I think good, good, I'm not doing doing any spoilers here, but it's just um, like it's this incredible slice of you see the substrata of uh, of Irish life and the depths that are, exist there, while at the same time our complete unwillingness as a race of people to tell anybody how we feel or what we actually think <laughs> yeah. yeah like for us I suppose it was just uh, the biggest goal was to, to achieve that to just that slice of life where it just feels authentic and I suppose there hasn't been too many films shot down our way in Longford either so just to show that little little corner and and how life looks down there yeah yeah. well so can we talk about Granard because like Granard let's go for it Shane's talking about driving <laughs> yeah. through it um, like for, for my generation no offence I did drive through it when I was younger <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's still a lovely little spot <laughs> I'd never heard anybody describe it as a lovely little spot before Shane did it here like because obviously it, it's famous in Irish culture for Anne love it and like you guys yeah. must have grown up with that as like the thing that everybody knows about us um, and now you're making a, a movie about football and about life yeah. There, it's just, it's just a, like, it's a character. You know, it's beautifully shot and it's incredibly captured. And even the the name of the Lakelands and the the eponymous lake, like, it's stunning. Yeah, that was kind of shocking to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know. that's good to hear. But I suppose for us, we wanted to just shine a positive light on on Granard and the Midlands, and but while not shying away from the issues 
it currently faces um, and, and yeah just to hold the mirror up and um, depict it in an authentic way but also a way that's positive um, because we see it through a very positive lens we're very proud to be from Granard we love Longford um, we, d- we don't feel we get a fair shake all the time but I suppose we just wanted to make something that Longford keep people and people from the Midlands could watch and be proud of you know? Yeah I think you can argue though that like um, the 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 crisis of the film is actually you know a natural uh, it's it's on a, a, the same spectrum as the the place and the the traumatic incident that happened in Irish cultural mm. life. Like, mm. um, I don't know if you've seen the um, Pray for Us Sinners that's out at the moment, the documentary about Navin. I've been reading about it. Yeah, Sinead O'Shea's film. It's absolutely yeah. amazing, and uh, the and Love It thing features in that as well. The mm. night of the night the story breaks on the Late Late Show, uh, Gay Brown yeah. reads the headline and kind of just dismisses it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, you know, I'm I'm not saying that you guys had this kind of perpetually in your the background here, but like, um, I would argue that they're all part of these movies are all part of the same kind of. Our, our inability as a country to deal with trauma and uh, everybody they're doing it through football they're doing it through farming they're doing it through drinking they're doing yeah. it through drugs do you yeah. know what I mean? They definitely form a kind of an interesting network when you look at them side yeah. by side yeah. different ways it's kind of been processed for sure Yeah yeah 100% and like even Keen in, in our story like he is dealing with trauma and, and can't articulate it. and I think yeah that's symptomatic of what it is to be Irish unfortunately Was it Simon Crow did the cinematography? It, it indeed it's yeah. like How obviously you have to utilise that to kind of uh, not to get all third level English on it but like to, to highlight the the loneliness of the character as well it's almost like a Banshees of Inishirin thing where you use the environment around you whether it's the Iron Islands or wherever or Granard uh, and you use that to, to depict how lonely this character is albeit as you say he has the character Grace around him and this tetchy relationship with his, yeah. with his dad but but certainly the cinematography plays into all of that yeah big time yeah like we really wanted to capture those kind of wide landscapes and kind of emphasise yeah it can be quite beautiful but also quite empty and quite lonely at, so, at the same time yeah yeah so that was a big thing we were kind of flagged at and we were lucky to have Simon on yeah, on, on yeah he's a beast he's he's a six foot three <laughs> ape of a man and like he he just threw the camera on and in the middle of those training sessions just got right into the action and that helped us and allowed us to I suppose capture it with, with authenticity and um, yeah, he's he knows our farm down home better than we do at this point. He's been down so much, and he's he's shot every inch of it. But he's uh, he's a talented boy. You were shooting during COVID too, am I right in saying so? That, that there's challenges been brought there yeah, as well. Like it was like uh, walking a tightrope at times, but we we were able to shoot it in between lockdowns. Um, we probably shouldn't have went to the pub after uh, <laughs> the, the first uh, few days of, of shooting, but um, the whole town came in. But look, we were lucky enough to keep the COVID out and. Um, yeah, I suppose we'd been deprived of being on set for so long. It was uh, just to be back shooting was was incredible, and you you really appreciate it when you've when it's been taken away for a bit. How do you how do you divide the responsibilities? Like who's shouting action? Who's like? <laughs> we kind of just yeah figured it out. We're we're kind of lucky that we're. we're we grew up together with childhood friends so you can't fall out too badly with your childhood <laughs> friend you know yeah. you can so we uh, we just kind of trial and error but uh, we kind of just split it evenly yeah. um, and communication try not to yeah, step yeah. on each other's toes yeah. too much yeah we haven't cut off any digits yet and in, in the when you're actually writing stuff do one of you take responsibility for dialogue one of you take responsibility for like blocking scenes how does that work because uh, again um, yeah it's kind of we kind of would split it kind of um, it's we kind of kind of find it quite useful actually. We mm. kind of get two bites at the cherry nearly. You're nearly having two drafts at everything, mm. two opinions, and you can confirm things yeah. quickly. We so, we definitely have uh, similar reference points. You know, we know the same kind of mad local characters, so we can say, yeah, he's a bit of this guy, he's a bit of that guy, and um, I think just having that same kind of life experience kind of helps you to to move a little bit quicker through scenes. Was it all planned to a T, or were there certain scenes, even with, with as you say, characters from the town that cropped up that you're like, geez, that's actually really really good we'll, we'll leave that in or we'll, we'll adopt that a little bit was it all kind of planned to the nth degree or was it a little bit flexible uh, oh there was a good bit of flexibility yeah you kind of have to be live to it yeah, yeah. for example I, I think you've probably seen the calving scene in the film yeah. that wasn't there actually yeah, right? planned yeah. at all yeah. his that's dad, a real calf I was going to say I mean it looks like no it's CGI there no? it was, yeah, it was yeah. shot on his dad's farm and Porrick just came running up the yard. He's like, grab the cameras. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> there was one about to pop. But yeah, we were shooting in the middle of cabin season. So you're like, it would be amazing if we got it because obviously we were working off a, 
you know, a, a smaller than normal budget and, you know, that's just incredible production value. But yeah, he came storming in and um, grabbed the camera, grabbed Aina, threw him into the mix and Aina had about 45 seconds tutorial on how to calve a cow and Jesus. the calf uh, survived. So. Oh, I was going to say, no animals were actually <laughs> hurt. Ending, yeah. But he's, he's actually getting his hands in there. That's like, that's him doing the, right. That's yeah, right. And, and the calf was unresponsive for the first few minutes. I was going to say. Yeah, so yeah. So my dad was there doing kind of charades behind the, the cameras saying, you know, you know, give him, give him the kiss of life. But, right. Uh, um, yeah, he he. Uh, he I mean, a he, moment of high tension. <laughs> for sure, yeah, it kind of set the set the tone then for the rest of the set because everyone was like, "Okay, this is a bit mad." If he can do that, then yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. So the movie actually premiered, I think, in 2022 at Galway. Is that right? Yeah, Galway so, the fly. Yeah. Yeah. So you've had five or six months to decide what you're doing next. What are you doing next? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're back to the road board at the moment. We're we're developing a new film with Screen Ireland at the moment right. called Bonfires. That's. Um, yeah, that's set in Longford again. So we're 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 hopefully sticking around for another what another next film in Longford as well. Yeah, and then we're yeah. kind of developing some stuff in the UK as well at the moment. Yeah, so. we're not done with uh, Grand Rogers. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. Going to say, sure, Vince Gilligan and Breaking Bad led to uh, New Mexico being used as a as a filming mecca. So maybe Longford is the yeah, <laughs> yeah. The mecca of Ireland. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it looks it looks beautiful. It really does look beautiful. I do think the concussion thing in America though is it's like um, you know oh we can't talk about this. It, we can't see it. I think there's a good opportunity for. The American sports writers to get behind a movie like this, you know, because it's not the same as um, the concussion movie and uh, all that kind of stuff. This is a completely different but very obvious high school sports equivalent. Yeah, we were screening over in America actually at the Santa Barbara Film Festival when a lot of this stuff was just really coming peaking in the news. Yeah. So we were getting a lot of people coming up with parallels, stories, and yeah. a lot of people playing American football and yeah. stuff like that who were saying they'd kind of had parallel experiences. Mm. So Hopefully it has a, a little bit of a life over yeah, there, maybe. for sure. So it's opening on May 5th? Yes, indeed. Well, we wish you the very best of luck with it. Uh, Robert Higgins and Patrick McGivney, I, I, you played senior for Granard. Did, did you? Until I played, played just up un, until senior. You saw a sense early. <laughs> Get out of there, yeah. <laughs> Got do you, do you, uh, is it a love-hate relationship you have with GA? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I think most club players have, have a similar uh, perspective. Um, yeah, like, look, I, I love it. I love my club. Um, you grow up in it. You know, but, 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 that's the the thing. The movie is the but, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, as I said, like, we just wanted to show it, you know, in all its glory and not shy away from the more challenging aspects of it. I suppose GA, you know, it's there's an obsessive element to it just by its very nature, having to train four or five times a week. Drinking and bands and all Drinking bands, yeah. give up, you know, your summers. Like, the claustrophobia of... Yeah, yeah. And, like, there, it comes with a lot of sacrifice. You have to give a lot of yourself to it and, you know, it affects people around you, girlfriends, boyfriends, you know, that, that can't, obviously... Um, you know, they, they have to give up, you know, you know access to you I suppose for periods of time during the season and um, so that you can go and be abused by a middle aged man living out his fantasies <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was great yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. but look we, we're very passionate about it too we love it um, yeah. but we just wanted to uh, yeah, show it in all its glory alright well listen uh, you did a great job well done lads yeah. uh, Robert Higgins and Patrick McGivney thanks very much for joining us in studio this morning go see it from May 5th